All right, hello. Um, we are moving on to segment five of eight in the women's USBC final where we were playing against the Baker team. And this was the start of a new day. We went into this day with a pretty decently sized lead. So, you know, it's good to have a lead, but the most important thing I thought was just to keep playing bridge and, you know, don't play protect the lead or anything like that. Because when you start doing that, uh, if you if some stuff doesn't work out, then you're not really in a good mindset anymore. So anyway, uh, we were playing against Karen and Lynn Baker at our table, and uh, Toby and Janice were at the other table playing against Irina and Carrie. So we'll go ahead and get started. So here we have the first board out of the box. Um, I had the West cards, so I pick up a very nice... 19 counts, and the first few bids are pretty scripted. I responded two clums, our game-forcing call. My partner rebid two spades, which showed six for us. And I could have rebid two no trump, and then if partner raised me to three no, then I could continue with something like four clums to show a good doubleton race. But my plan here was always just to set spades and key card. I thought I had a very a good enough hand that after partner showed six cards and spades, that I didn't really need to make any slam tries, so I did what the easiest way to set spades and bid key card was going to be to bid three spades. So usually three spades would show three, but here I just set trumps, and partner did bid a very a kind of slow four spade, but I thought that I had plenty enough that I just went ahead and bid key card. She showed one, and I bid the slam. And... They called the director originally when I bid 4 no, but then they, they, or at least Lynn said that there was no problem, which, you know, I really think that this kind of, this hand strength is not really going to be a problem for bidding over four spades. And keep in mind that we do open light, but we also play standard, so the non-serious range is not the same as if we were playing precision. So, whereas if she bid four spades while we were playing precision, she would really show complete trash. I don't think that the she can really do that anymore. Uh, she can't give me a non-serious with like a an okay but like not trashy hand because then I might assume she has a little extra for her non-serious since her range is now like something like 10 to 17 so, you know, obviously this, like, the 18 plus may, may drive to slam, and, like, the 15 to 17 roughly might be serious, and so then, like, the 13 to 14 might be, like, a non-serious, something like that. Well, anyway, um, as you can see, both heart honors were on side, and the diamond finesse was on side, so literally no way to go down in this contract. And uh, the only thing that was amusing on this board is that uh, Karen played the Ten of Spades on the first trick. Uh, she could see, looking at her hand and looking at the dummy, that this contract is going to be cold. So she decided to just have a little bit of fun and suit preference for hearts to make Beth a little worried. But uh, once, once Beth leads the Jack of Diamonds... Uh, which gets covered, now she's going to have two pitches for two of her hearts. So then she can't possibly get it wrong. So now the next board. So Beth opens two no trump. And what we play here is that three spades is a relay to three no trump. And four clubs shows a single suited club slam try. And then... Uh, for presumably four diamonds over this would be key card, four hearts and four spades would be cubids, and four no would be regressive. Nothing nothing really exciting. With some of my partners, we play optional key card here. but So Beth bid four no, which was the worst bid. And it's very easy for me to construct hands where six clubs is making, or even just cold, that where she would bid four no. And since we were up by maybe 60 in the match at this point, roughly, I didn't really think that they would not bid this at the other table, so I didn't have any way to intelligently investigate Slam at this point, but, you know, I figured that they would be bidding it at the other table, and in fact, they did bid it at the other table, but they bid it accidentally. <laughs> uh, I think that there was a miscommunication in the auction. One of them bid for no signing off, and the other thought it was 
or one of them did five clubs signing off and the other one thought it was key card or something like that. I don't, I don't really know. But anyway, so they did bid it at the other table and I just jumped to six clubs here because like I said, I have no real intelligent way to investigate slam and I can certainly put points in partner's hand that will get, make a very easy make. So they led the nine of spades, which, um, which I had a few options of how to play the hand, but I just decided to make the pretty normal play of going up and then running the king of hearts immediately to get rid of my spade loser. And then my plan was just to hope that trumps come in and then I can play diamonds for only one loser, which is a pretty good chance because the nine of diamonds is actually pretty big here. Uh, it means that I'll likely be able to bring diamonds in whenever uh, definitely whenever the 10 is doubleton, whenever they're 3-3, three, three, uh, whenever it's a stiff king uh, or stiff 10, and the only one that I'm going to lose to is if it's 10-4th, um, on my left, I think, because because I can play a diamond to the ace and then a low diamond towards my hand, so then I can even pick up a uh, king and one offside. So basically, if the heart finesse wins, then I'm in really good shape, I think. So I went king ace, and uh, of course she doesn't have any information about the hand, so I don't think you would ever duck this trick. So king ace, and I pitched, or roughed anyway, and I crossed to this trick. Uh, and now, uh, I didn't take the exact best line here. I think that what I should have done is I should have played ace of clubs and a club to the king. And then I would, when north shows out, then I have a free, I can pick a pitch and then rough a heart and see if I can maybe bring the hearts in. Um, but I was pretty sure that, you know, I was going to bring in the diamonds for only one loser. So I decided to just catch the queen of hearts here, see if the hearts looked like anything good was going to happen. And I couldn't really tell anything here, so I decided to just go with my same plan of drawing trumps and uh, trying to play the diamonds for only one loser. Uh, which uh, I think what I need is I'm probably I'm going to lose to uh, king fourth, king ten fourth in the north hand. That's like literally the only hand that I'm going to lose to. Uh, so I just uh, ran my trumps a little bit because why not? And um, then did this and then played a diamond to the ace as I planned. And at this point, Karen has already pitched a diamond. So now um, I was looking pretty good here. And I was never planning to take the diamond finesse like the Vugraf operator is saying. So I didn't really see any point of, I was only ever gonna have one more entry to the board anyway. Okay, so just another dull push. <laughs> Now the next board, um, they open three diamonds on my right, and of course they were first seat white on red, and this pair plays very aggressive preamps. So I was a little nervous about passing three diamonds, but I didn't really have the right hand to make any sort of call over it, so I just passed. And now Karen jumped to four hearts, and I, at these colors I was worried about getting stolen from. I thought it was possible we may have a game in clubs or spades, uh, and you know, um, I don't usually expect them to make the contracts that they bid, <laughs> just at, at white on red. So I made a kind of aggressive takeout double here. And Beth found a very good pass, as you can see, uh, because because the opponents do have some stuff, but they're not really fitting, so we don't do very well in our contract. But because they're not fitting, then uh, we do we do decently against their contract. And actually, she bought pretty well. She got a singleton. Of course, her singleton was opposite her king-queen, and she got three-card trump support. It could have been much worse for her. Um, four hearts, definitely a very aggressive jump. But I think uh, when you're when you're down 60, you, you uh, probably want to do some stuff to try to get, put pressure on your opponents. Anyway, so Beth led a spade, and I won. And I could s see that... Uh, you know, dummy might be getting roughs or stuff, so I just uh, played a trump back, and I was what I was really hoping was that Declare didn't have ace and one diamond, since if she had ace and one diamond, she was going to be making this contract just by playing ace and a diamond and 
roughing a diamond, and then she can cross to her third heart. Anyway, she played. She thought for a while. Eventually, decided to play low because it doesn't really help her to play high. And uh, my partner won and thought for a while. And I think she eventually decided that I should have a diamond stopper for passing over three diamonds, doubling, and then switching to a trump. So she just followed by playing another trump, and now declare unblock the ace of diamonds, and gave it a go at leading this club. And I won, crossed my partner in spades, she drew the last trump, declare pitched a club, and uh, had to lose a club at the end. So that was, that was a good result for us. At the other table, they defended four hearts down one, and they, their auction was not as informative as ours. So if you don't know exactly, then of course it's normal to just cash out with your two spades and one club. Our defense was definitely a little dangerous. So if Declare had a slightly different hand, they might have made it. All right, so then the board four. So we picked up a few more imps. Now we're leading by a pretty decent margin. My partner opened a club and south over called one spade. I made a negative double. I went pass. She bid a no trump and south bid two diamonds, which ended the auction. And against two diamonds, I just had a normal diamond lead, which actually, if you notice that the diamond lead from my side does kind of blow up the suit, but I, with queen nine fourth of spades behind declare spades, I felt like it was necessary to lead it. So partner doesn't want to put up the king since that means she can't over rough dummy. So she scooped the 10 and set about roughing her tricks and which got over roughed. And uh, unfortunately, um, the way that the hand is we can't beat it because she has that fifth diamond. And we basically did as well as we could here to hold it to two. The other table was, I think our side competed to three clubs and that went down one for a push. Next board, I opened one spade. Partner gave me two spades. I continued with three hearts to see if we could find a better heart fit, and she jumped to four spades. And this board was kind of interesting here. So Karen led the king of diamonds, so I won. And if clubs break, then what I want to do is basically just draw trumps. But if clubs don't break, if I just draw trumps, I'm going to be short some tricks. I don't have a late entry to the board, so I can't rough a club or anything like that. And I don't know if clubs are breaking or not, but what I decided was that I can't just give up on the chance of taking a spade hook and then clubs don't break, I won't come up to enough tricks. So I might, thought I might as well just try to combine my chances a little bit by roughing maybe, or go, at least attempting to rough a heart. And the opponents couldn't see my hand, so if I lead a heart up, then possibly they would just shift to a trump, make my life easier, so that then if the clubs are breaking, then I'll come to um, 5, 10, 11 easy tricks, actually. But if they don't shift to a trump, then I might actually be able to make it on some sort of a cross rough here. So as much as I wanted to lead a heart from the board with limited entries, I just played a low heart out of hand, and Karen played the queen. And now um, she didn't quite have enough information to know that a spade shift was going to be safe. Certainly leading a singleton spade into your partner's four card holding seems kind of dangerous. So I think she shifted to the 10 of clubs here and it went jack, which now to me basically indicated that clubs were probably 4-1. So now I set about roughing some things. I don't think I quite counted my tricks at this point, but it seemed like my plays were probably pretty scripted. So I roughed, and now I roughed a diamond back to my hand, and I roughed again, and now I roughed a diamond back to my hand. And um, the diamond roughs are pretty safe because I know that Karen still has that queen of diamonds left, so I feel, felt very comfortable roughing low. And then I roughed this, and again, I know Karen has that queen of diamonds, so my plan here is to rough the jack of diamonds and then exit and have them take the spade finesse for me. 
So I led the jack and she pitched the ace of hearts on it. So the fact that she didn't pitch a club just confirms that clubs were 4-1 to begin with. I roughed and now I played the queen of clubs. She roughed and she played a spade because all she had left was spades. And so now I know the whole shape of the hand. I knew that she was 4-5-3-1. So uh, I have to go up with the ace if Karen has the stiff king of spades, but otherwise I have to finesse and finessing is percentage here. So I did that. And at the other table, they shifted to a spade after the heart, which I don't believe the hand can be made anymore at that point. So another uh, nice pickup there. So now, uh, Lynn opened one club, and I preempted three diamonds, which I think at red on white, I show a pretty decent hand. I think this qualifies. And North made a negative double and South bid three hearts, which floated. And uh, there wasn't that much to the play. I led my king of diamonds, and I think we got however many tricks we got. Um, she, she gets spades right, so she got to pitch her diamond loser and then, uh, and then conceded a club for making 12 tricks. The other table, they did manage to get to game. So here we were, we were doing great. I could tell that we were having a very good card. Um, and I think sometimes when you're having a good card, you kind of fall into feeling like you're invincible. <laughs> uh, but here, so Karen opened a heart in third seat. And again, I was already a little wary, just being concerned that the opponents might be trying to do creative things to try to uh, swing. And it went past one no, I passed and North bid two diamonds, and I was ready to make a takeout double over two diamonds, and then South bid two hearts. So now, once South bid two hearts, my takeout double is no longer percentage, because now I know partner has three hearts, and South, it's possible that South could be giving a false preference in diamond to hearts with four diamonds, but that would still give my partner four diamonds, and uh, it's not as likely that we have a fit anymore. Uh, but what actually what I was thinking at the table was I was all ready to double over two diamonds, and I knew that my righty had been a no trump, which denied spades, and my lefty opened a heart and rebid two diamonds, which made it unlikely that they had spades either. So I was just thinking we likely had a 4-4 four, four spade fit, and I wanted to find it. Uh, unfortunately, partner had a pretty gross hand for my takeout double, and uh, she scrambled into three clubs, and of course Lynn was happy to double this with King, Queen, Jack, Fifth. So Beth did basically as best as she could do. She tried to rough some of my spades, and uh, I think they could have gotten her one more trick, but uh, they eventually beat three clubs, three tricks for 800. So, so that was a little unfortunate, but I knew that we were having a very good card already. Having, you know, the first two slams I thought were likely to be pushes, but it was possible we could gain imps on those, and then we had a lot of gain positions. So basically, I still thought we had a pretty decent card, even ignoring that board. So now the next board, it went uh, one club, one spade, two spades, pass, three spades, pass, three no, and I was on lead. and. Uh, Obviously, three no, no trump is much better played from the north side, so you can't get the heart lead through the king ten. Um, I thought with three spades that I should just lead partner's suit, but it's definitely possible I could have found the heart lead, I think. Um, we do play that double of three spades would be lead demanding, like, no seriously. So I don't think that I had enough strength in spades that... Um, if partner couldn't make a lead demanding bid, that I wanted to, that maybe I wanted to think about another lead. But I, what I was thinking mainly is that it was possible that dummy had an honor, like the queen and declare had the ace, and that partner wasn't going to make a lead de demanding bid with the actual hand that she had, king jack ten fifth, and that I sh might as well just lead a spade through. And I wasn't necessarily sure that they were going to have enough tricks if I did something else. So I let a spade, and uh, they claimed however many tricks they make. Uh, and as you can see, if I do lead my fourth best heart, then we beat it. But you can never beat it from the north side. So I was pretty confident that our teammates would play it from the north side. So 
So then the next board, uh, my partner opened a club, I bid a no trump, and south balanced two diamonds. And if I elected to double two diamonds, it would basically be penalty. Uh, so I didn't feel strong enough that I wanted to double two diamonds. I didn't really feel like we were necessarily beating it two anyway. So I just decided to sell out to this. Uh, at the other table, they actually got to their 4-3 heart fit instead of the 5-2 diamond fit. Anyway, so on this board, um, I think that we can we can only actually beat it one as long as she guesses the diamonds correctly because with with dummies, spades, and clubs we aren't ever gonna be able to tap her out because we won't have enough cards to tap her out in because uh, as you can see now we have the club to tap her and we have one spade to tap her but then because the diamonds are 3-3 three, three, she'll still be able to get that fourth heart and she drew the last trump and now she claimed but of what the Vugraph operator noticed is that once she pitches the spade we can actually tap her out by by a spade followed by another spade so uh, so she should have gone down too but you know, if she didn't pitch a spade, if she pitched like a heart or something, then we can't do anything about it. So I think that... I think that in this kind of situation, you've already kind of accepted that the declare is only going to go down one. So you're not really paying attention on this trick that while well, she's in the middle of claiming. And at the other table, they did double with my hand, and I'm not sure exactly how how many it's supposed to go down, but it went down too, so we lost a few imps here. Then this board, um, we didn't bid in this auction. I had a random nine count, and my partner was on lead, and she led her queen of clubs. So I played the ten, which is just descriptive, and Declare played some diamonds, and I could tell that my that Declare was going to show out in diamonds, so rather than give count, I played high-low to tell my partner I had something good in spades. So they roughed, and my partner continued the jack of clubs, in case I had a singleton, I think, but also to try to establish that club trick. And she continued like this, and I didn't quite see any reason to rough from the long hand with very l low trumps, so I just pitched a spade. And she roughed, and now she exited a spade, and I thought that it was maybe good to try to uh, give my partner somewhat of a promotion, so I continued the Queen of Diamonds, which she won, and I think if she plays a spade back, um, we may actually be able to beat it one trick, uh, because I'm not sure if Declare is going to guess the heart position when I lead a heart through. But they might. Uh, if they do guess the heart position, then they'll end up with eight tricks. And at the other table, the play was a little different, and so they went down two. So again, we lost a few more imps here, back down to uh, about 50-some lead. And here, uh, South opened three clubs. And again, I knew that they were having a very aggressive, preemptive style, but the worst thing to do, I thought, was to make a off shape double here and try to get back to par when and then just have a disaster when partner bids some number of spades like I really should not have only two spades for a double so and I thought three no was out of the picture it was just a really wild shot so I passed hoping that my partner could maybe do something or that they were just gonna be in a bad spot if my partner had nothing and Karen passed of course and my partner thought about it and decided I think with this kind of hand and also king third of clubs that her hand wasn't worth a three spade call. So she passed as well and I think that um, on normal breaks we'll be able to make four spades but um, with the five one spade jerk it's not so good and certainly we can't make three no because we're off the first five diamonds so we actually were a little lucky here that we didn't have any any game our way. So instead we just defended three clubs and 
I think we ended up beating it three tricks or something. The play was not all that interesting. And at the other table, they got to 3 no, probably on a different auction. Um, and then they, uh, they went down one on the normal diamond lead and cashed five diamonds. So now here, I opened one no trump, which is 14 to 16. And Karen jumped to three diamonds, which was alerted as a good, good hand. And Beth almost has enough for a negative double, but not quite opposite of 14 to 16 no trump, I think. So she passed, passed, and of course I have nothing to say. And so, uh, again, here, uh, we were pretty lucky. We do have a nine card sp spade fit, but we don't make it, which is which is great for our side. And I think they found some pretty good defense at the other table to beat three spades. They got they got two roughs. They got a heart rough and a diamond rough. So it was pretty lucky that we weren't making our three level contract. Of course, three diamonds has no play. She always has to lose a spade and two diamonds and two clubs. And we can actually get one more trick, but it's a little hard. Um, First of all, partner led the 10 of clubs, which I have no idea if it's from 10 and 1 or singleton 10, so I didn't think I could really afford to just cash the club. So I thought that I would shift to a heart, try to figure out the position. And now when they play a diamond up, um, what we can do, I think what we have to do really is we needed to, to shift to a spade at some point, take our spade trick, and then promote my partner her trump trick. But that's, that's a little too hard, I think, because... We don't really know what the shapes of the hand are, and we don't... Like, I didn't know exactly how many spades Declara would have, so I didn't know that it was necessarily even right to play on spades. Like, if Declara had the ace-jack-10 or something, I could see that she wasn't ever going to get to the board, so I was going to end up with two spade tricks. So I didn't really want to play on anything. I could basically tell that we were going to beat this as long as we sat there passively which is what we did, and eventually we did beat it one trick. And of course, three, three spades went down one at the other table on their good defense. So now uh, they're bidding again, and we have uh, nothing to do in this auction. One spade, two no trumps showing something, three spades showing something. I think three spades showing heart shortness, and this person, you know, looking at King Jack Tubbleton is not really loving that. And my partner did manage to find the heart lead, which was good. And then I played the queen, and this got roughed. And Declare very quickly claimed 12 tricks. So n nothing really for me to do on this board. So now, my partner opened a club, and South jumped to three diamonds. Which, you know, I mean, if you notice, they have jumped to some contract on, like, basically every hand. It just gets quite annoying. <laughs> um, and so I made a negative double. And it went f past, and my partner bid four diamonds, which is a little unclear, I think. And that's, I mean, preamps are tough, right? So four diamonds is either pick a major and, like, just pick a major, or it's, like, extras, and like she knows what suit she's coming in, you know? So it's very ambiguous. But anyway, I had longer spades. I picked four spades. And she doesn't quite have enough to move over four spades. But as you can see, so this slam is going to require um, a few things. It's, it's going to require uh, hearts to come in and spades 2-2, two -two, basically, I think. Because I think if if hearts come in and spades are three one, I don't think I necessarily have the timing to rough three diamonds. Um, the other thing that it that'll make this slam pretty easy on two two spades is if they do lead a diamond, then I can just let it run around to my diamond, pitching a heart and draw two rounds of trumps, and then I'll be able to rough one diamond and one heart if I need to. So it's a very good slam on a sorry. Very good, maybe very good is an overbid, but it's a decent slam on a diamond lead and a pretty bad slam on not a diamond lead, I think. And at our table, they didn't lead a diamond. They led from their king, queen, jack, fourth of clubs. So 
I just won that. And I was only in four spades, I didn't really care. I just played ace, king of spades, roughed a diamond, played a, you know, the, and then, you know, played some stuff and hearts didn't break. I think I eventually made five. And at the other table, they did lead a diamond, so she made the play of letting it run around to her king, and that allowed her to make six, but she was only in five, so we lost one imp here for no biggie. But I could see that uh, we were close to slam, but that slam was probably not going to be making. And now this final very exciting board here. So I opened one heart and north bid Michaels, and my partner jumped to four hearts. And I went pass, and I passed, and north continued with four spades, which, depending on your style, either shows something like 6-6, six, six, or it shows longer spades than the minor. I think it just depends on your partnership style. A lot of people don't bid Michaels on things like 6 in the major, 5 in the minor, so for those people, it would definitely show like 6-6. Six, six. But if you could bid Michaels on this hand with 7 spades and 5 diamonds, that's probably more along the lines of what it should show. And Beth passed four spades, I think, because she probably was maybe regretting her four heart bit a little bit now because, you know, she does have some defense and probably wants to get in there. And Link bid four no trump. And the Vugraph does not have me doubling this contract of four no trump, but I'm pretty sure that I did double four no, but I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure I did double four no trump. Um, if I didn't double 4-0, no, it was going to be because my plan was to pass and double whatever minor they landed in, um, which is possible. But I think I think that um, I may have passed 4-0, no, and my plan was just to see what they bid, and, you know, maybe, maybe like, if they bid diamonds, I was going to bid five hearts. Like, I just don't remember. But I'm pretty sure I just doubled 4-0, no, Trump because I have a real hand, like a really good hand. So I think I doubled 4 no, and Karen, of course, bid 5 spades. She's, I'm not even sure why she necessarily introduced a minor, because she doesn't want to play in it. But, uh, and then Beth had enough, she doubled 5 spades. And she led the ace of hearts, which was a good lead, and Karen roughed. And, you know, the play to this is kind of nothing. She has no way to get to the dummy. Dummy has no roughing value for her. So she just draws trumps and gives up how many many tricks she has to give up. And when she laid this diamond, I won this and I cashed the king of clubs and partner gave me the deuce. So now I could see that Declare had a stiff club and a heart void. So she was probably like seven five, I think. So just make things easier. I just cashed the king of diamonds. If Declare had the ace, it was falling anyway. So I didn't want anything stupid to happen, so I just played it, and Karen claimed down three. And so we picked up 13 imps on this board, um, because at the other table they got to six hearts down one, and uh, I think they like made some sort of like a silly comment on somewhere. I think it was in the bulletin about how six hearts drifted off one, but actually six hearts is cold. But, um, so I haven't done this for any of the other matches, but this board was so interesting that I want to go to the other board here. So here, Carrie opened one heart, and Toby, I think she was trying to walk the dog a little. She bid one only spade. And now the auction continued. Uh, Irina made kind of an aggressive cue bid, and Carrie bid key card. And now Toby is like, <laughs> like, what should I do now? And eventually she decided to pass because I think a combination of being red on white and like, what can she even do, right? Like, I mean, it sounds like the opponents are heading towards slam, so she's not going to solo out a save against slam. So she passed, which ended up being r kind of crucial to this hand. And she showed her key cards and arena bid six hearts. Which I think that if I was in her position and my partner Cupid, I would also end up in six hearts. So now, um, the reason this contract always makes is that the club finesse is on side, and even though it looks like you have to lose two spades, you can actually, uh, I think, um, squeeze your north opponent, because they guard 
the spades and the diamonds. So if they let go of their diamond guard, then you can uh, just cash your third diamond. If they let go of their second spade guard, then you exit a low spade and s enjoy the king of spades. But what actually happened was that Toby led the ace of spades and continued to spade, obviously sitting on seven spades and hoping to give her partner a rough, which was not to be. But now, um, it, now it looks like she's just going to make this. With, but, I mean, she doesn't know where the queen of clubs is, right? She can't see all the hands. So it seems normal to do some stuff and run all her trumps to try to work out what the club position is. And so she has probably found out now that, I mean, Toby pitched seven, or played seven of her spades. So she found out that Toby had seven spades and bid one spade. And she had a heart void also. And she knows Toby has some sort of shape in the minors. So I think uh, Janice pitched um, two clubs and Toby pitched one diamond and no clubs, obviously. So she has to decide whether Toby's hand was ace, queen, jack, ten, seventh, uh, queen, fourth, and queen and one, or whether she had the actual hand that she had and led the ace, didn't bid more than one spade, led the ace of spades rather than her stiff club and, you know, pitched the way that she did, which I think they both did a good job and the Vugraf people comment that, like, you know, they did a great job on this. And so, you know, she has to decide whether whether North started with Queen and One Club or a Singleton Club. It's if uh, North started with uh, two small clubs, that would, you know, then the Queen would have popped up in Janice's hand. So that's not an option for her anymore. And I think that I can't imagine that many people would get this one right. Um, so eventually she went up with the king and Toby showed out, which is just, I mean, like if you're at the table here and you're thinking about, you know, what is, what is the likely position? What is the likely shape? I think that, you know, eventually you're going to play the king of clubs and, you know, when the queen comes down, you're not going to be surprised. But like, when the diamond shows up on this trick, you are going to be surprised because you're going to be like, wow, like that's, that's a crazy hand to have, I think. But so that was a really well done by my teammates there. Um, and so we ended up picking up 13 on this board instead of losing a few for 800 versus 980, I think. Um, Certainly, if they had led a club, then Carrie would have just easily made this, I think. So, yeah. So, that was this session, and it was great, I thought, because we picked up another 20, uh, which put us at almost 80 imp lead now, which is a good feeling to have. Obviously, three more sessions left, but, you know, just... We're now just trying to play bridge, and uh, we're in a very good position. So, so yeah, that was segment five.